present and past participles. Alashmut. Joe is employed as a lifeguard at the beach. When he isn't working on his tan or checking out the ladies in their bathing suits, he's perfecting his grasp of present and past participles because there's nothing as attractive as a man with a six pack and amazing grammar. Yeah, well, that's what we think around here, Jamal. All right, present and past participles are two of the five verb forms that verbs can take. For example, say we have the verb swim. The present participle of this verb is swimming, and the past participle is swum. Well, say we have the verb laugh. Well, the present participle of this verb is laughing, and the past participle is laughed. Okay, now hopefully we've all caught on to the fact that the present participles always end in ing, I-N-G. Is that convenient or what? Oh, we love English. All right, past participles are trickier. While the past participles of regular verbs end in ed, irregular verbs can end in all sorts of different ways. For example, the past participle of the verb bring is brought, and the past participle of the verb sing is sung. So just be aware that there are no patterns to pick up on when it comes to past participles. And yeah, sometimes a lot of curveballs in there, right? All right, well, we've mentioned that present and past participles make up two of the five verb forms, but participles are used for more than just action. Not only can they appear as multi-part verbs, they can also be used as nouns or adjectives. So say we have the sentence, Joe is boiling beneath the hot summer sun. Well, the word boiling is the present participle and it's incorporated into a multi-part verb by the auxiliary verb is. Note that it doesn't matter whether the participle in the multi-part verb is in the present or the past tense. Participles as verbs require auxiliary verbs. So we can take our sample sentence, Joe is boiling beneath the hot summer sun, and change it to read, Joe was boiling beneath the hot summer sun, or Joe has boiled beneath the hot summer sun, or Joe was boiled by the hot summer sun was boiling, has boiled, and was boiled are all combinations of auxiliary verbs like was and has, and the present participle boiling or the past participle boiled. Got all that? All right, so let's look at what happens when an irregular verb wants a piece of the action. Say our sentence is, Joe is taking a nap on the beach. Taking is the present participle of the verb take, while taken is the past participle. Got it? So with this particular irregular verb, we could change our example to read, Joe was taking a nap on the beach, or Joe has taken a nap on the beach. No matter what combination of auxiliary verbs and present and past participles we use here, napping on the beach is a great way for a lifeguard to get fired. Right, Joe? We can tell you that from personal experience that they don't like it when you sleep. Separate issue. All right, let's move on to how we use participles as nouns. This only applies to present participles which, when used as nouns, are called gerunds. Hey. Yeah, that's not that guy from Subway. Joe enjoys whistling at the pretty girls near his lifeguard station. <laughs> Here, the gerund whistling is the direct object of the verb enjoys, trotting out into the surf to help the occasional swimmer exhaust Joe. Well, here the gerund trotting is the subject of the verb exhaust. Joe ate a slice of pizza instead of helping the guy who lost his dog. Well, here the gerund helping is the direct object of the preposition instead of. And we're going to guess that our lifeguard hasn't seen the movie Jaws. Yeah, well, the dog was the first to go missing, Joe, and uh, maybe there's a shark in the water, and uh, you know how that ended. All right, well, gerunds can appear all over the place. As subjects, direct or indirect objects, subject complements, and objects of prepositions. Participles as adjectives can also pop up anywhere in a sentence, either in past or present tense form. For example, say we have the sentence, the mangled body was swept onto the beach by the crashing wave. Well, the present participle crashing describes the word wave, while the past participle mangled describes the word body. Here's another sentence, Joe abandoned the beach when the terrifying shark appeared. Well, the present participle terrifying describes the word shark. Here's another sentence, Fortunately, two guys showed up, one with a gleaming oxygen tank, the other with a loaded gun. Well, here the present participle gleaming describes the oxygen tank, while the past participle loaded describes the word gun. At least someone on this beach is a Steven Spielberg fan. Action! All right, whether they're being used as nouns, adjectives, or parts of verbs, present and past participles work hard. Unlike Joe, who should have paid more attention to what was going on in the water uh, than to his beloved pan.
Action. What did the buffalo say to his son as he left for school? Bye, son. Okay, bad joke, but if you survived it, how about clicking the subscribe button below? And if you're looking for more jokes from yours truly, why not check out our website at www.schmoop.com. And if you want to get updates on what's new, well, check us out on Facebook and Twitter, too. Please check our Facebook and Twitter pages, please.